Hi, I'm Anne. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So last month I looked at a lot of the historical fiction and nonfiction that was coming out in June of 2022. And I thought for this month I could do the same thing for July. So I have eight books here and some of these I'm more excited than others. Some of these I am quite cynical on if they will actually be good, but there's a couple of these that I'm extremely excited about. Also, um, disclaimer, there's no way that I can talk about every historical nonfiction and fiction that is coming out in July. There's just too many historical works. So I kind of try to pick one the most hyped or the ones that I see the most of, as well as either by authors I know and have enjoyed or authors that seem to be well loved. Also, just if the topics are varied, I talked about this in my last new historical releases video where a lot of historical fiction especially, uh, center around World War II. And I'm just sick of those books. I'm sorry. Like, you don't need hundreds of books coming out that are based on World War II. So the first book that looks semi-interesting is The Light Always Breaks by Angela Jackson Brown. This is set around, this is centered in the 19, late 1940s after World War II. Uh, it follows this Black-owned restauranter restaurant owner. Um, and then she meets this white senator. And of course, it is forbidden love because during that time, interracial marriage was outlawed. This one I am cynical and I probably won't rush to read or read at all because some of the reviews on Goodreads are really negative. Excuse you. Yes, Loki. Thank you. Uh, and <laughs> He's been demanding all day. I'm so sorry. Uh, this is just like a feature on my channel now that he will photobomb it or camera bomb it, whatever you call it. But I've read a few very negative reviews. And even though it's not out yet, it comes out on July 5th of 2022. It already only has 3.38 stars, which is very low. So it seems like even though the setting and the commentary is interesting because it's talking about a segregated world following World War II and just some of the struggles that especially interracial romance has. Um, so it's intriguing premise, but if the characters aren't good, probably won't like it. So we'll, we'll see. The next book is The Dress of Violet Taffeta by Tessa Arlen. Uh, I believe this is... Um, a novelization or a fictional telling of Belle Lipicou. Basically, it's about a female designer, uh, fashion designer in the early, the early 20th century, 1912, and talking about just like the business of fashion, trying to uh, break out in the fashion industry for a woman back in the early 18th early 1900s. It's an intriguing premise. I don't see myself quickly reading this book just because I'm not super interested in the fashion industry. I never have been. And I've watched a couple movies that are about the lives of fashion designers and it seems kind of weird. Fashion designers are just weird. <laughs> no offense if there's any fashion designers out there. I mean, they're, they're obviously creative geniuses, but creative geniuses like writers are completely insane. So that that's nice. The next one, um, and I haven't heard anything about this, but I looked at the plot and it looked interesting, but it is set in World War II, so we'll see. And that's The Last Restaurant in Paris by Lily Graham. Um, this one appears to be uh, a self-published book. Don't quote me on that, but it is about this young woman who works in a restaurant in Paris uh, during the occupation of Nazi Germany into uh France. And she, in a sense, has to go undercover and spy in order to like protect her people. It's a story I've seen a lot before, but it, I am intrigued specifically because she works in a restaurant and a waitress. What are you doing over there? He's just such a weirdo. All right. The next one, not exactly historical, but it looks at a lot of the history of uh, Brit British towns. And it is Shadowlands, A Journey Through Britain's Lost Cities and Vanished Villages by Matthew Green. This is basically looking at the, the history of Britain from the perspective of towns and villages that have been abandoned and for various reasons. It gives a couple examples. Uh, for example, one is a medieval city plunged off a cliff by sea stormed storms, um, one, some that were wiped out by the Black Death in the Middle Ages, some that was taken over by Nazi, Soviet, and Afghan military for training. So it sounds like a really intriguing uh, premise, and I don't know that much about 
like the small nuances of British history. I just enjoy the big aspects of British history. So this one looks very interesting. The next one is The Sewing Girl's Tale, A Story of Rights of Men and Wrongs of Women by John Wood Sweet. This centers around the real life published first, um, can't say it's a word on YouTube, uh, sexual assault case during in American history taking place uh, around the time of the Revolutionary War. It is a nonfiction uh, documentation of this case. It could be good, it could be bad, but I am intrigued in just law cases throughout history, especially. I think they're really intriguing. Moving on to the next one. This one is the one I'm the most excited about, and that is The Daughter of Dr. Morier by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This is a reimagining of the Do island of Dr. Morier, but set in 19th century Mexico. I mean, what a setting. So I am a massive fan of the original The Island of Dr. Morier. It's actually the first H.G. Wells book I ever read. It's a great classic. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. But I assume this one takes a look at the uh, perspective of the daughter of Dr. Morier and look, retells the story from her perspective. First of all, I love the cover. I was completely blown away by just how like pretty and colorful the colors were. I actually just recently watched Encanto, Encanto for the first time. I feel like I'm always behind with like Disney movies or any new movies that come out. It takes me at least like two years after it comes out to actually watch it. But I watched Encanto and one of the things I loved about the film was just like the bright, colorful setting of this uh, Hispanic type town. Of course, that was like more fantasy, but uh, yeah, so I was intrigued by the cover and then I was like, oh, Dr. Morier, as in the classic that I love so much. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. I've actually already pre-ordered it from the library. Um, so I will be reading this and this is probably my most excited release of the month. It's coming out July 19th, 2022. All right, the next one, it's technically history, but it's technically recent history. And usually I don't care about recent history. Like any history past World War II, I just kind of ignore and pretend it didn't happen. Maybe a little bit of like the Korean War and Vietnam War, I'm more interested in that. The rise of dictatorships uh, around the world. Uh, for example, in Cambodia, uh, the Crimea Rouge, or like uh, Mao's China. I'm interested in that, but for the most part, I'm not interested in like late 20th century history. However, this one, this one is near to dear, near and dear to my heart because it's called Slaying the Dragon, A Secret History of the Dungeons and Dragons by Ben Riggs. I haven't talked about this at all on my channel, but I and my husband are big fans of D&D. Basically, Dungeons and Dragons is this tabletop role-playing game. So you have a person, the DM, the dungeon master, who kind of creates this world and says, okay, um, you're now in this village. Uh, what do you want to do? And you might say, oh, I want to buy these things from the market. I want to talk to this person that tells you that there's been attacks of goblins. And so you have to go defend the village against goblins. And basically, it's a role-playing game where you can play anything. It's a really interesting, fascinating game. I have, I just, I started playing in campaigns maybe about three years ago, about the same time that I met my husband. I actually met my husband through playing these types of games. So I'm really intrigued in understanding the history behind um, the company and how they also created Magic Gathering, which is a card game. I'm not very good at it. My husband likes it. Uh, so it's a very nerdy book, basically. But it starts, I believe, in the 70s because that's when D&D started to kind of take off. And then it, I assume, follows later on. So yeah, if, if you play role type playing games. If you're a nerd, this book's probably for you. Technically, it's recent history, but it looks really intriguing to me. And final book. Oh, I guess I had two on here that was World War II. Ugh, you can't get away from them. You really can't. And that is The Librarian Spy, a novel of World War II by Madeline Martin. I was intrigued by the cover. And I also love the idea of like librarians being spies in World War II, which just sounds, sounds cool, okay? And basically it follows these two women. One works for Congress uh, and then one works in occupied France. And it kind of has to do with how they go undercover to help World War II. This is not an uncommon uh, plot line. I see this a lot 
it's not exactly new. However, one, I was intrigued by the cover because it's just so beautiful. And I like seeing the perspective of like two female characters on different sides of the globe. I'm curious to see more of the American experience because you don't see as many books about the American experience in World War II. Mostly it's from either the British perspective or French perspective is so popular now. I'm like, stop, you, you have enough. As for like which ones I am highly likely to read, probably the only one I'm going to like run to read is The Daughter of Dr. Moriah, just because I love the original so much. And I really love the setting being set in 19th century Mexico, which is a really intriguing setting of like retelling the story. So, and also Slaying the Dragon. I'm definitely going to try to read that because I love D&D. <laughs> um, but which of these look the most interesting to you? I think I'm going to be doing this every month. Uh, it's just something that I would do anyway for myself. Also, I'm curious for those of you who are actually still watching this, I'm considering, uh, because I currently don't have a job and if it takes like a month or two to get a job, I might as well just post more on my YouTube channel and just devote more time to YouTube. So I'm considering posting three times a week. Um, and I haven't decided whether I want to do Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, because then I could do Tag Tuesday because I post a lot of tags. I never post them on Tuesdays. So I've never done an actual Tag Tuesday. So I'm thinking of doing that. And then the other one I was considering to do is just Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm thinking more towards the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So let me know your thoughts. Um, if, yeah, if you would watch more videos from me. Um, I am doing like shorter videos and I'm finding that I'm getting more views and people are enjoying them more, having them be like, between 10 to 20 minutes as opposed to 20 to 30 or more minutes. I was posting some that were like that. And I'm trying to like keep my videos shorter to keep it more interesting because let's face it, like I myself really struggle with videos that are over 20 minutes um, on BookTube. Uh, and, and there are a few live streams that I'll like put aside to watch when I have the time, but there's just a lot that I can't get to like if, you do live streams or like book reviews that are really long, um, it's a lot harder to watch than a video that's like 10, 15 minutes. Because for me, because I watch it double speed, that's only like five to seven minutes. Whereas if you have a hour video, that's a half hour of time for me. And it's hard to like find that block. So I'm trying to post shorter videos, but I still want to have them be like sub substantive substantive and not like incredibly short. So I don't know, I'm blabbering at this point, but there's just so many videos that I wanna make that I'm like, yeah, but I wanna do a tag on Wednesday and then on Saturday, I have like videos planned out all through the month on Saturday. So I'm like, well, I have to get rid of some of the tags that I was planning to do on Wednesday in order to like film a book review. And I do wanna do more just devoted book reviews to the books that I'm reading, especially some of the classics that I'm reading. Um, and it's just hard to like find time for everything when I only post twice a week. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like subscribe. I post every Saturdays and Wednesdays for now at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a great week. Bye. Mm -hmm.